Geometry node might be a little bit hostile at the first look. It's a lot of boxes that you connect together and it makes a 3D object. In this video, I will teach you the basic so you can start any geometry node project. So we're going to make a table that is parametric. To start a geometry node object, you can start with any mesh in Blender. I will start with a plane, but it doesn't matter because we will change it afterwards. Let's drag another screen at the sides and select the geometry node editor. We need to click on new so it creates a new modifier with a geometry node 3. Right now we have nothing, we have just an input and an output and nothing in between, meaning it will not do anything with this object. Let's press Shift A and click on search. We type transform and we will have a transform node. If we translate on X, Y or Z, we see the plane is moving, meaning we take the plane, we transform it by translating on X, Y and Z, and then we're showing it in the viewport. So that's the result you get. So that's for the basic. Now let's make a table that is parametric. You can press Ctrl X to remove the node and go back to the default. I'm gonna shift A, click search and search for a cube. We're gonna start with a cube and plug the mesh into the output. Now we see the output of the cube and not the output of the plane anymore. This cube has some properties that you can change. The really nice thing with geometry node and the power of it is that you can take those inputs and put it in a group input so it shows in the modifier and you can adjust directly your object from the modifier. So let's drag this and type combine XYZ. For now it's zero, so the cube disappeared, but if you put everything back to one, you have your cube back. If you drag the different inputs in here, you do have now some inputs in the modifier and adjusting them will automatically adjust the objects, meaning you don't need to go back into the geometry node 3 to modify the different properties and that's the power of geometry node. In this example, I'm gonna make it a little bit more like a table. So one, two, and for the thickness, I'm gonna put 0 0.5. Great, looks a little bit more like a table and those inputs are not really expressive. You can go to the group and double click on the different properties to rename them. We have the basic of the table, but now we would like to add some legs. To add the legs, we have to ask ourselves what is a leg. A leg is a rectangle, so this is a cube. We can shift D to duplicate this cube node. And if you haven't already, I truly advise you to enable the add-on Node Wrangler. This is a basic add-on that it comes with Blender. It's totally free and if you enable it, it will help you a little bit better in the node managing. So let's now press Shift Alt and click on this node. It now show this cube and not this one anymore. And we see it is plugged automatically to the output. A leg is small. 0.5 and I'm gonna add this over there and for the height it's 0.7 let's say so we have a leg it's it's nice but we would like to have multiple legs at the corner of the table first of all we're gonna mix the legs with the top so press shift a 
and go search for join geometry. This will automatically join the top of the table and the leg and we have this combined object on the left. To make the leg parametric, we're gonna use the combine XYZ node and copy the different settings that we choose over here and plug this into the side. I'm gonna plug the X and the Y at the same point because this will be a square shape. I'm gonna plug the Z over here and rename my input. If we change the properties, we can change the different sizes. Great, we have one leg and a top table and we would like to dispatch them at the corner. In geometry node, we have what we call a grid. So press Shift A, search and search for grid. A grid is a number of points that are dispatched and you can use this to put the different object on those points. Let's add a new node instance on point. This instance on point takes points, of course, so this is the grid and the instance you would like to dispatch on the different points. Here it's the legs. I'm gonna unplug this here and plug this over there. We have legs that are dispatched on the grid. The grid is one meter by one meter, so if you change the size of the grid, it changes where the legs are dispatched. And if you change the resolution of the vertices on X and Y, you change also the number of legs. So I'm gonna put this to two and two, so we have four legs for the table. That's great, but those legs are not really placed very well. And if we change the top width and length, it doesn't follow the corners. To fix this problem, we're gonna shift A and click on search and search for inputs. Select the group inputs and choose the top width into the X and top length into the Y. That's a little bit better, but it's going outside of the tabletop. We would like to have them a little bit inside over there. So we need a margin. To create this margin, we're gonna click and search for a math node. The math node will allow us to subtract a number to the width and to the length of the object and allow us, as you can see, to adjust the margin. Let's duplicate this subtract node and use the length, plug it to the Y, and we have now a little bit of margin on the X and Y. To be able to change this margin later, we're gonna use it as an input and plug those two so when we adjust one, it adjusts also the other one. We're gonna rename it right away so we don't forget what it is. Margin. Legs margin. Great, we have margin, we have legs, we have top, but those legs are in the middle of the top of the table. Not really convenient to it, so we're gonna move them down. We're starting to have a little bit more nodes now and it's a little bit complicated to know what is what. Let's make some group. We know that those two nodes are the top of the table, so select them and press Shift P. This will create a box that is a group and press F2 to rename this group. So we're gonna name it top. We're gonna select all of this and this is the legs. So 
Shift P, move it a little bit down, press F2 and rename it legs. We see a little bit more what we're doing. So let's use a transform node and put it over here. If we change the Z axis on the translation, we have now the legs moving at the right position. So we could find a value that is working with this, but then it's not dynamic anymore. And if we change the legs height, it's not working. So we need to make this dynamic so it's moved the legs at the right position and they are connected to the top table. To do that, we're going to use again a combine XYZ and plug it to the translation. We have to ask ourselves what do we need? We need to move the legs from half of the height of the legs down. So let's shift A and search for inputs and add a group input again. We have the leg height that we can plug into the X, but this is moving too much and we want also it to move at the bottom. So we use a math node and plug it in between. We are going to divide this by two. This will place it at the right position, but since we want them at the bottom, we're going to divide by minus two. Great. So it now takes the height, divide it by two and place it at the bottom. If we change the leg height, it's now following at the right position. We have everything we need for the table, but the origin of the table is at the top, which is not really easy to move and we want it to be at the bottom of the legs. To fix this issue, we need to transform the whole object, so the top and the leg, and move it up. We're going to use a transform node and use the height of the leg to move it up. So let's go over here, add a combine XYZ and again shift A add a group input. This group input will allow us to take the leg height and put it into Z. We are now having the origin at the bottom of the table. And if we change the leg height, it doesn't change the origin. Great, we have a parametric table. And since I'm using the add-on Fluent Catalyzed, I'm gonna add it to my asset library so I can use this into another project. So I'm going to set up the mean and max and the default value for the add-on to be taken into account. And I'm going to add them to my furniture library. So I have it for another project. All right, that was it for this basic tutorial. I'm going to make more in the future to go a little bit deeper into geometry node. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know in the comment section and I will see you on the next one.